Call to order. This is the eighth regular meeting of the 2010-2011 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you. Do not repeat anything you will not sign your name to. Good advice. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Boren? Here. Bauk? Here. Bowers? Here. Decker? Excused. Gisha? Here. Hammond? Here. Hannah? Here. Heidemann? Excused. Koth? Here. Kittleson? Here. Montemayor? Here. Radke? Here. Rinfleisch? Here. Vanderweel? Excused. Versi? Here. And Wonkeman? Here. 13 present. We have a quorum. Uh, now Alderman Rinfleisch will lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Eric. Uh, looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignation, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. There's one uh, <clears throat> from Angela Sukevich advising that uh, because she's been recently appointed a circuit court judge for Gordon County, she's respectfully submitting her resignation as a member of the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners. Says it was an honor to serve on this commission, and she thanks you for the opportunity. Motion to accept and file the resignation. Second. We have a motion to accept and file and a second under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointments for your consideration. James Pragitz to be considered for appointment to the Board of Police and Fire Commissioners to fill the unexpired term of Angela Sukevich, whose term expires 4 2014 and David Soxie to be considered for appointment to the Redevelopment Authority to fill the unexpired term of Glenn Killing, whose term expires on 4-28-14, signed by the Mayor. Those appointments lie over. Confirmation of Mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Peter Pittner to be considered for appointment to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired position of Sarah Thiel, whose term expires on 4-25-2011, signed by the Mayor. Motion to confirm. Second. We have a motion to confirm and a second. Under discussion, we have Alderman Hammond. I would just ask that we do a roll call. Yes, this will be roll call. Okay. Any further discussion? Alderman Boren? Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. Can you give me a little information on Mr. Pittner? I'm not familiar with him. Uh, I do not have any information on Mr. Pittner myself. Does anybody else? Alderman Hammond? Uh, thank you. Uh, Mr. Pittner is the president of, Car uh, excuse me, of Miller Engineers and Scientists. Um, they do civil engineering, environmental engineering. Um, Thank you. Probably knows a bit about sustainability. Mm -hmm. yes. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Abstain. Hannah? Abstain. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Versi? Aye. Ann Wongeman? Aye. 11 ayes, 2 abstentions. Motion carries. Public forum. All right. This evening, first on the list would be Jeff Shuko, if you'd like to come up to the front. And Jeff, can I have your home address, please? 2508 Indiana Avenue, Sheboygan. All righty, and you will have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, as you all know, I've had a business now here in Sheboygan called Great Lakes Avian Pest Control, where I've been engaged and specialized in doing gall abatement. And I wasn't planning on coming here today, or this year for that matter. And this is not about money. I'd just like you all to be aware of that. I would like you taxpayers to know that my associates and I discussed the contract being awarded to these other companies, which they were this present year, for bird abatement in Sheboygan this year. We decided not to take any action, even though our bid was misrepresented. 
We instead decided to let the city and these companies take over and we would document the results just as we've done the last five years. Sadly for you taxpayers, you have been charged far more than necessary and a season of population control of the gulls here has been lost. That is because the egg calling and oiling program that was implemented and money spent on produced nothing. I can explain that later. The latest article in the Sheboygan Press dated July 3rd, 2010 is why I am here today. This article has done irreparable damage to my business, my business's reputation, and me personally. This article was crafted by the Public Works Department of Sheboygan and the Sheboygan Press, and I'm just going by the storyline that was presented here in that article on July 3rd. This has further demonstrated to us a pattern of behavior <coughs> that puts my company in a negative light in the public's eyes. This has happened before. We can and will demonstrate this if need be. This behavior does not encourage business growth in our community and in fact results in higher taxes for you folks at home. You eliminate competition, you raise prices. It's real simple. In regards to this article, Gulls Under Control, the storyline here would lead us to believe that city officials stood around all last summer wondering what to do. And then, this year, thanks to a new system, these people come in, are brought in, and our problems are solved. It's like somebody went, perfected time travel and went back in time and changed history. My company doesn't exist, I don't exist, and I'm not here today. Who did an abatement program there last year? Thousands of you at home will know exactly what I'm talking about. We turned that situation around overnight and saw to it that all the events went on without a hitch, thanks to the mayor seeing to it that something was done. And uh, I informed the Sheboygan Press to bring down a photographer, reporter. Let's run an article. Let's shoot some positive PR down there for the tourism for the year. And yet throughout the entire season, we didn't have a reporter or photographer show up and do a follow-up article, which by the way, sells newspapers. Further down into the article here, we get into the egg calling program that they engaged in and they didn't find any on the beaches. Well, that didn't surprise us because there haven't been gulls nesting on the beaches here in the last 80 to 100 years. They are in fact, if, you know, if you look over at the Stephanie Wild Center, you've got a small bunch of the col nesting colony now all over that building, nesting, young birds, and they're in various locations which my company's documented long ago. Egg culling and oiling programs are included with our program and we, we take care of that for municipalities. We don't expect them to know what to do. And we also, when we submit bids to a municipality because it's taxpayer funding involved, from day one, we don't hold the mu municipality to a contract. This year, the alewives didn't come in. Because the alewives didn't come in, the large numbers of gulls didn't come in. What you have here now is resident birds that are, that are, are in smaller groups. That's what you're seeing on top of the buildings and causing trouble. However, today I noticed there were a couple of thousand birds congregating on the beaches now. They are starting to come in and they are lining up on the roof at Blue Harbor, just like they did it last year. The passive beta Berkman system that's being used now is actually going to be replaced with newer equipment that my company's developed and uh, we plan on taking over the market. There's a major manufacturer that wants to market our product lines nationwide. So I was kind of disappointed to have to come here today and talk about this rather than occupying one of these empty buildings in town and start hiring people and going into production. But articles like this don't help local businesses like mine to grow at all. Quite the contrary. And I just wanted the taxpayers to know that uh, because of the way things have gone this year, April, May, June, and right into July up until now, you wouldn't have needed anything but an occasional shock program. Excuse me, Jeff. Your five minutes are up. Would you like your additional one minute? If I may. Motion to approve the additional minute. Second. Second. Go ahead. Thank you. Uh, What's happened, what's transpired this year is without the alewives coming in, the large numbers of gulls are in coming in late. And we've noticed this all along the lakeshore. We've been documenting this. This year, it's the same everywhere. 
they're coming in late so the birds are coming in late now you're going to start to have some real problems but we estimated with DPW's involvement with management having to run around on beaches looking for eggs which we had no assistance with last year and it wasn't required uh, really you're probably looking at an overall cost of your bird abatement program now it's going to be upwards of twenty thousand dollars compared to the 10-7 or whatever it is but that was bid but the important thing to remember is is that the first three months of this program we really wouldn't have had to do anything much at all i could have been engaged in an egg calling program taking care of that for the city and judging by what's left of the season now you would probably end up with about a five thousand dollar bill for the year this offer is made universally to every municipality excuse me joe thank you for your time everyone next on the list would be milt storm <clears throat> you don't mind if I adjust the mic? Yeah, that'd be fine. And can I, I have, have the same trouble over at St. Luke United Methodist Church? These guys with their P's and R's and Q's keep spitting into this mic. Okay, go ahead. My name is Milton Storm. I and reside at 1736 Marvin Court. 1736 Marvin? Yes, and I've owned that house now for 45 years. Okay, you can go ahead. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to speak. Greetings to Mayor Ryan, council representatives, and citizens of the city of Sheboygan and of Sheboygan County. And a special thank you to my favorite department, the city clerk's office. I'll try to be brief, although that, that usually is not my style. One of the issues that I would like to address is the old worn out issue of the mayor's position versus a city manager or a city administrator. I'm always thrilled and seem to be enlightened by members of the Sheboygan County Taxpayers Alliance, especially some members who uh, speak very well. My suggestion to some of those members that they go to the uh, county board meetings and commissions and heckle Adam Payne a little bit. I generally uh, don't do uh, give out uh, university degrees, but tonight I feel that someone here or she is very deserving. I have in my hands a document and I would like to present that to the mayor. Uh, it is a degree or an honorary degree, it's called an H HPD. That's one step H above a PhD. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, a little spice up these meetings a little bit. <laughs> so let me read what it says on here. This is the Marine Corps University of Business and Economic Development and is being presented to Mayor Robert Ryan. This honorary degree in HPHD is given to Mayor Ryan, a graduate of the Marine Corps University of Business and Economic Development. Presented this day for his excellence in managing and administrating the affairs of the city and the county of Sheboygan. I, this is presented in the year of our Lord, July 19, 2010, and the authorized signature is M. Thunderstorm, of the radar division of the U.S. Army Signal Corps, Fort Monmouth, New Jersey. Congratulations, Mayor Ryan. <laughs> now I digress a little bit here now. Why there are certain individuals who are always trying to upstage me with their letters to the editor. One is from my bowling buddy, Tom Labouvi, which appeared in Sunday's paper. I could never compete with that left-handed bowler. The other two are from James Gisha and Alderman Corey Balk. Let me read uh, parts of Tom Labouvi's. He has entitled, Public Salaries Benefits Are Absurd. 
Every employee must pay a fair share toward his or her retirement like everyone else. A fair share toward their Cadillac health insurance. Retirement age should be similar to the rest of society. Wages, insurance, and retirement for teachers, city, and county workers should be the same as the rest of the country. I like this one. I never saw any biblical passage or anything in the Constitution that reads that teachers, police, and firefighters should be granted ridiculously early retirements and equally ridiculous benefits. What is happening to all our units of government? Unrealistic union contractors granted by politicians and have no common sense. Now it is uh, Alderman Gisha, a very excellent man. He had a letter, this is uh, March 2nd of 2003, and his uh, letters claim that the war about oil is ridiculous, just to refresh your memory. There's an old Geisha family saying that applies to Paul Perez's letter to the editor, War is for Oil, campaign contribution to Sheboygan Press, February 27, 2003. Now, I don't know who Paul Perez is, maybe Alderman Geisha does. Now, the old saying is, it is direct to the point and simply says, wise up. Excellent. Now, as far as Corey Bauck, he wrote an editorial letter about a month and a half ago, and I questioned the person who answered him. Now, I don't know what uh, Corey Bauck's family saying is, but being in the military as I would, I would suspect me, that Bill? maybe... You're going to have to ask for an additional minute. Make a motion to grant that. Okay, second. Go ahead. Okay. One more minute. I'll have to go into overdrive here now. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what Corey Bauck's uh, editorial or his uh, family expression is, but since he was in the military like I would, it may be shaped up or shaped out. I think that's a little more punch to it than wise up. Well, in the Storm family, it was something between war and peace. One old German expression was, <coughs> du bist ein Dummkopf, and that means that you were a dumbhead. Another expression my identical twin brother would always say, I was a dummel bell ringer. I have no clue what that meant. Of course, my mother was the gem of all, and she would always say to the two of us, will you shut up or I'm going to go get the stick? Now, that's better than wise up or shape up. I would like to read a letter from a CEO of a large manufacturing company here in Sheboygan that is no longer in existence. And as uh, Gore ripping business appalling, it's between Gore and Bush. As a proud Excuse American me. who is frequently proud also to vote Republican, Milt. I am appalled by- Excuse me, Milt, your minute is up, I'm sorry. And that's the full time, six minutes, I'm sorry. Thank, thank you, Milton, thank, thank, you for, thank you for my first honorary degree here. I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> All right, next on the list is Colin Catchell. Colin, if you want to adjust the mic, that would be great. Okay. And then I need your home address, please. Uh, 321 Bluff Avenue. 321 Bluff? Yep. And you will have five minutes, sir. All right. My name is Colin Ketchell, and I have been a technology education teacher for 10 years now, and I know what kids like and respond to. I've been to countless museums, conferences, and work with kids daily on a variety of engineering and design projects. The spaceport might have good intentions, as well as the people working behind it, and I don't discredit their effort one bit. What I do see is a second-rate museum being created at the expense of the people of Sheboygan. This project will never be successful and have long-term success. What person is going to take multiple visits to see old space equipment and use 20 and 30 year old simulators? There's definitely a generational gap. Baby boomers are still living in the space age past and times are changing. Also, what are our priorities? The chances of becoming an astronaut are 13,200,000 to 1, less than the NBA. Kids need realistic goals and so do cities. At this time in our history, we enter into a depleted energy future, otherwise known as peak oil. The last thing we need to or be worried about is space travel. If anything, we need to worry about getting a passenger rail system that connects Sheboygan to other major cities in Wisconsin if we want to see Sheboygan's population and tourism grow. People of Sheboygan have strong traditions and a great respect for their public parks, events, and successful community strongholds such as the library and YMCA buildings. 
For four years now, there has been a wound in Sheboygan, and that is the closing of the armory. Many traditions have ended unnecessarily, and a place where everyone in Sheboygan could come together has been destroyed. Ask any citizen of Sheboygan if they have positive memories of the armory, and the answer is a definite yes. Was it really necessary to cancel all the traditions that have been carried out for 65 years because times were good and a new conference center was built at Blue Harbor? When you were in the Army, you feel like you were in something special, something that was built at a time when we took pride in our work. When you're in Blue Harbor, you feel like you're in every other conference center in the country. The Armory could be used for so many great things and bring revenue to the city. The Armory just needs fresh ideas and some old traditions. A major issue is that concerts and venues that are not suited for the Wild Center could take place there. Trade shows of all types and styles, motorcycles and car shows, dances, multiple sporting events, both local and national, local art shows, Taste of Sheboygan, <coughs> Sipping on the Shores, plays the Gus Macker Finals, boat shows including sailboats that could raise their masts inside. We are a U.S. Olympic training center now. Farmers markets, the Coho Derby, firing range competitions, fundraiser, cultural fest, U.S. sailing camps and workshops, graduations, reunions. It also has classrooms for seminars. It could have weddings, proms, independent films, national speakers, and the circus, which is now at Blue Line. A voluntary staff could book events and functions just as they do for the Wild Center. It can currently seat 3,500 people at $10 a ticket. That's $35,000 for one event in revenue. The city still pays $25,000 a year for heat alone, $75,000 since closing, and we still, the taxpayers, can't use it. The firing range could also be used by the public instead of the urban middle school. Do we really want Blue Line representing Sheboygan for events? It's not the armory and never will be. Times are tough and the armory can draw revenue for the city. This could also be used as a charter school location. A few points why the spaceport won't work. Five million was donated supposedly, but four million was the armory donation and the city still pays the bills. The floor display still looks like an eighth grade science fair after three years of effort. Kids have an Xbox 360 at home and do not get excited by 20 year old simulators. Most cities already have an IMAX theater. The majority of people in Sheboygan under 60 are not excited about it. Nothing serious could be launched in the city anyway. It would have to take place outside of the city. And again, we can't ride a train to Milwaukee, so why are we worried about space travel? I encourage all of you to not vote for the extended lease of a dollar per year for additional five years. Four years was plenty of time to get things in order. The armory should be given back to its rightful owners, the people of Sheboygan. The armory should be put on a historical reger register and be used for the public use and community events. A public forum of ideas and action could be created and it could be run by a volunteer staff just like the Wild Center. It is very important for Sheboygan to have a place to honor our veterans and military members. This used to take place at the armory, but not anymore. It would be a shame to see the armory spend its 70th and 75th anniversaries vacant and idle, which it will if this lease is handed over for another five years. There is a perfect alternative now. If the Glassic project is so confident they that they will be successful, then they can and should purchase the triple play slash spikes building, and the city can give them a five-year tax-free incentive. They could also move their efforts to Oshkosh, where space and experimental aircraft seem to go together more than Sheboygan and space travel. I hope you take this vote serious and realize that a mistake was made four years ago, but that this mistake can easily be corrected tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Colin. Thank you, Colin. Next. <clears throat> Next would be Patricia A. Holm. <clears throat> Patricia, you want to pull the mic down for you, and I need your home address, please. 2602A Camelot Boulevard. 2602A. Mm -hmm. And you will have five minutes. Okay, thank you. Sure. Mayor Ryan and members of the Common Council, when I was a kid growing up, I'd sometimes hear my parents say, you can't fight City Hall. And I'd think to myself, that's a dumb comment. This is America. We elect people to represent <coughs> us. We tell them how we feel about issues, and they take action based upon the majority opinions of those they represent. It sounds simple enough. We've all taken civics class in high school. But now I'm a grown up. Age and experience brings wisdom, right? I've tried my naive ways in situations using the concept of representation of the majority by a few elected officials. I've discovered that correspondence directed to those elected, appearing before committees, and public letters in the newspaper are not enough to get my voice heard. So I'm making my last ditch effort in public forum before <coughs> you this evening. 
It is abundantly clear that our city is in dire financial straits when it comes to the annual budget. And it is the exorbitant cost of salaries, wages, and benefits paid to our municipal employees that keeps us there. It's time to remember who it was that elected you and whom you represent. Those public sector employees that reside in the city and pay their fair share of the ever-increasing taxes in order to meet the ever-increasing demands in wages and benefits are and should be represented by you, just like the rest of your private sector residents. But that's where it stops. All of your efforts in office should be focused on representing the majority of citizens in holding the line on spending to stop the rise in overburdening taxes placed on the backs of our residents that are already facing economic stress and hardship. With regard to the Sheboygan Fire Department ambulance issue, we've now seen that doing the right thing by older persons is not enough in this contentious situation. An alderman who stood up and voiced the popular opinion of his constituents may now possibly be brought before the ethics board. Why? Because he tried to represent the majority based upon the opinions expressed to him as their elected representative. Now, what does that tell you about the way other votes will be handled in this matter? Prior to the Sheboygan Fire Department's involvement, ambulance service had been provided by a private sector contractor with no problems or complaints against it. However, that contract was terminated by quick action of the Common Council in 2007 or 2008 so that the Sheboygan Fire Department could take it over. Had a referendum been held at that time, I'm certain we would not now be in this difficult situation. The only way you can truly represent the citizens in this city with regard to this matter is to now put this ambulance service issue up for a public referendum in the November election to get it resolved in the best knowledgeable manner available. I urge you, no, I beg you, to support and approve the resolution for a referendum on the ambulance service issue when it comes before you for action. Thank you. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, and Pat. Next. Last on our list is Jim Testweed. <coughs> and Jim, can I have your home address, please? 2711 North 6th Street. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Honorable Dr. Mayor Bob Ryan, <laughs> council, people, thank you very much for hearing from me. It's been a little more than four years since myself and my committee came up here and asked the council to give us a letter of intent allowing us to move forward with the spaceport project. We've spent the last four plus years analyzing, measuring twice, measuring three times, defining what could be in there, going across the country to see who has comparable entities that we could look at, that we could glean knowledge from, and I think we've finally been successful and we feel pretty comfortable about what we've taken. Certainly more comfortable than we were two or two and a half years into this project. Um, you know, initially, obviously, the city was going to get rid of the armory. We didn't have it given to us and ha shut anything down. It had a shutdown date about the same time we took it over. The school district, the only thing really left in there was the uh, north-south game, and they both certainly don't want to go back there with the end line on the baseball co basketball court two feet from the wall. Um, anyway, we went out. Initially, we created a business plan. We created another business plan. We hired a consulting firm which is considered the best nonprofit consulting firm in the world, Lord Cultural Services of Toronto. They've worked with the Louvre, American Natural History Museum, the, Sheboygan, the John Michael Kohler Arts Center, lots of places globally, and they came and did a business plan for us. They think we've got a viable operation going forward. We went and defined each little piece of it. Um, I'll take you through sort of how we came up with the planetarium we've got. 
we hired a gentleman from down in Chicago named Jim Schweitzer. Again, probably the best planetarium consultant in the world. He's built planetariums from Sweden to Italy, from LA to New York. He actually built a, um, the only observatory at the South Pole. Uh, consulted with NASA, he was a consultant to create that. Phenomenal man, loves education, loves planetarium, understands what we're trying to do, understands we are not New York, Paris, or LA, and introduced us to the people that create the software that runs those three planetariums in those cities, the biggest ones. I went out and met with the director of the planetarium at the American Natural History Museum, spent a whole day with him as he showed me how their gorgeous, huge, Planetarium, which is called the Rose Center for Earth and Space Works. We've got the exact same software, but only one projector instead of 15. But uh, we can do that stuff, and we've, bet we've got a couple nice grants. The Planetarium is a grant from WPS that we're working towards, and we've got the basic parts to put it together. Um, I went to the Denver Museum of Nature and Science. They've got a phenomenal planetarium. They actually sent their planetarium director here to work with our staff last year that we hired for their education program, they're committed to helping us. We've gone around, we've really, I think, designed a great track to build our planetarium project, which is part of the program, one piece at a time and move forward. Then we went out and looked for exhibits. We can't really take any exhibits without this lease because we don't own a building. The only place that will give us anything is the Cosmosphere in Kansas. They've got a lot. We've got about $187,000 worth of exhibits insured in the building right now. We know their exhibits at NASA. We've talked to the Smithsonian Air and Space. They've got a bunch of stuff. They won't let us take them until we get a lease on the building and can define a property plan for the building, which we've got written, but we can't do without a lease. Um, we've partnered with numerous other places on that. We've also um, worked with NASA on their education programming. We went to Houston. We went to Alabama, we went to Florida, went to space camp down in Huntsville, talked to all of them, see how they operate, and spent a lot of time in the Kansas Cosmosphere, which is really a very similar operation because they're not a big population center and they don't have giant rockets going off or they're not building or they don't have a Saturn V sitting in the backyard, which does tend to draw a little more than we will. But the Cosmosphere does a phenomenal job, puts about 40,000 kids through field trip trips every year and we've uh, we hired them they built us curriculum for a charter school based in science and math we've talked to Sheboygan Area School District they've already got a grant out to do it we've got a uh, bunch of field trip things written by the Cosmosphere we've got a bunch of camps we've hired a gentleman who was an ed educator down at the Cosmosphere he's on staff now um, and then let's go, there's a lot more going on, but let's go to the building. The building itself, it, a, the amount that it is in our numbers, one million, not four. But uh, we really can't ask for money to fix the roof, which leaks quite a bit. We already fixed the floor because it had buckled in a rain about a year and a half ago pretty badly. So classic paid to have the floor resurfaced in there. And it just rained in there. We had a mop up again the other day. Well, every day it rains. Mm. Actually, every day it doesn't rain. It leaks somewhere. Excuse me, Jim. Would you like the additional minute? I would love an motion additional minute. Motion to approve. Second. Go ahead. And so you know, we've, I've been on the roof. I've had, a, you know, <coughs> as a donation to Glassic, I've had people up on the roof patching the roof. I've gone up there and patched the cracks in the wall, which caused a lot of the leaking. The reason we really have come to a point where we've we understand what we want to do. It took us a while. This isn't something any of our committee has ever done before, run a museum, run an education center. But we've partnered with people that have. We've partnered with people that do. We think we got a good handle on it. We've run the numbers eight ways to Sunday. We understand we've got to grow it organically. We can't just plop down the, some big visitor center from Florida here and expect people to come. But we've got people calling. Our website's site's getting a lot of hit, and it's going forward. And so I would just ask you to pass the uh, lease as it's written, and I promise you that you know, we will, A, save that building, because I think if we don't save it, it's not going to be there in two years. I'm pretty sure of that, because it needs a fair amount of money, and I have a feeling you guys don't have the uh, initiative to go in there and fix the roofs and fix the walls and put a new furnace in there. And so thank you. thank you very much. That, thank you, Jim. That will do it. <coughs> okay, uh, moving on. Mayor's announcements. Um, we have one announcement this evening, courtesy of Alder Person 
Vice President Kittleson, I would think. Me? I'm not. Uh, the National Night Out. <laughs> national Night Out, uh, which is the uh, National Night Out Walk Against Crime, will be Tuesday, August 3rd, 2010, which is uh, two weeks from tomorrow, I believe, at 6.30 p.m. Uh, this is a 1.9-mile walk. Uh, forms up at Fountain Park. Uh, takes a route around and ends up back at Fountain Park. Um, anybody interested, uh, this is a good event. I hope to make it myself this year. Uh, need to register by July 31st, 2010. Um, there is no charge unless you'd like t-shirts. If you would like a t-shirt, it's $8 for an individual, $16 for a family. Family consisting of dad, mom, and children, or grandma, grandpa, and grandchildren. Um, this is a great event. Uh, for questions, call Detective Weber at 459-3857 at the PD or Penny Weber at 6980358 or visit the website the Crime Stoppers website www.crimestoppers.ws so good event i hope to make it myself and i hope that we also have a lot of uh, a lot of you older persons and uh, the general public there also that's all i have for mayor's announcements uh, on the consent agenda we are going to take 81 through 818 we are going to take 19 and 20 separately, and we will take 821 through 824. So consent agenda, 81 through 818, and 821 through 824. Alderman Bourne, did you have something? I had some comments on 8, 19 and 20. When it's when uh, 19 and 20 we will take separately? Okay. President Gisha. <clears throat> Thank you, Your Honor. I move to accept and file all reports of officers, accept and adopt all reports of committees, and pass all resolutions and ordinances. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, Dr. Mayor. <clears throat> let's, let's stick with the Mr. Elby. Thank you. <laughs> yes. um, I have a question on 814. Mm -hmm. Perhaps the uh, fire chief could come up. I just need some clarification. Okay, 814 on the fill of the boot campaign. Uh, chief Herman. <coughs> <clears throat> Hi, Chief. Uh, I always participate in, I just need clarification. Are the firemen and women uh, that are working in the event, are they on duty or off duty? The majority of them are off duty. Okay. Does the utilization of the fire department equipment uh, during the campaign put us in any kind of jeopardy? Uh, we utilize uh, reserve apparatus. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Uh, under further discussion, Alderman Rinfleisch? Uh Thank you, Your Honor. On any, eight any other discussion, I should say. I suppose, yeah, on that one. On 822, uh, it is the um, concrete sidewalk construction project. I uh, just want a clarification that this is just for the sidewalk repair project and not for the new sidewalks uh, that there's been some concern about if we need them in certain areas or not. On the uh, sidewalk the construction project, uh, Deputy Director Beeble, would you like to answer that question or does that, uh, Ryan, Ryan Sasma, City Engineer. Yeah, this is, this is our typical sidewalk uh, improvement program throughout the neighborhoods. Okay, so this, this won't have anything to do with the new construction in like the business park areas? No, there's been some concern not about. at all. That, that falls under the non-motorized program. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Engineer Sasma and Alderman Rinflesh. Any further discussion? Alderman Bowers? Thank you. Uh, Ryan, um, could you tell me about the sidewalk program? That is entirely paid for by the property owners themselves right yes it is yes it is the city the city pays for it up front and then we and then we turn around and we assess the property owner what what does the city pay for this the city pays for the contract initially up front and then we turn around and we assess the property owner then okay. for the sidewalk so we do approximately how many in, in a, a year 50 uh, homes you mean yeah uh, this year is probably more than half probably 75 80 homes in this okay so that uh, it doesn't cost the city any money to do this it's a property owner uh, except for the root grinding, if the sidewalk is heaved up due to trees, the city oh. reimburses the homeowner 40% for that. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bowers. Any further discussion? Alderman Bourne, did you have anything else? <coughs> Nothing? He answered my question. 
Any further discussion? Thank you, Ryan. There is no further discussion. Uh, roll call on 8-1 through 8-18 and 8-21 through 8-24. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Cuth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Now we will take under the consent agenda 819 and 820. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution, the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Thank you. Under discussion. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> uh, this issue went to both of the committees I serve on, finance and public works, and I voted against it in both, in both committees. However, I am going to support it tonight because I've heard from several constituents uh, that uh, want me to support it. However, I still have a concern, and my concern in the, in the new lease that I expressed both at finance and at public works is that, <clears throat> and I appreciate all of the work that Mr. Testweed has done uh, in his organization. I also appreciate the work that Alderman Hanna has done on this uh, behind the scenes. But my concern on this lease is the renewal of the lease after the initial five-year lease. Uh, by the time we come around to this second five-year lease at a dollar a year, this organization is going to be uh, nine or ten years old. And I guess my concern was in committee is that an organization that is going to be almost ten years old at that time, uh, the council should be taking a look at, at the end of this first lease at the financial viability of this organization. Take a look at their financial statements and if they're still in precarious financial in a precarious financial situation then perhaps go along with another lease at five years at a dollar a year. But I'm hoping because I, I like the program and I hope it's very successful. I hope at the end of this five-year lease that they're making a lot of money and their balance sheet looks good and then if that's the case I think the council should take a look at charging them some rent that kind of would go with uh, what, the, what the going rate is for space at that time. So as I said, I'm, I am going to support it tonight even though I didn't support it in committee, but uh, that one section of the lease still bothers me on the renewal. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Any further discussion? President Kisha. <clears throat> thank you, Your Honor. Um, I want to thank City Attorney McLean for spending an an inordinate amount of time working on this lease. It's been like an eight or so month process. Um, the, the city, there's been a little misconception. Uh, it is a five year with a five year renewal. But as uh, Mr. Testweed stated, unless they get, we get, they get a long term commitment on a lease, right now, by the way, this isn't a new lease. They don't have a lease with us. Unless they get a long term commitment of five, over five years, you're not going to get the displays from the Smithsonian. You're not going to get the stuff from Nassau. You'll get some of the smaller operational stuff that was mentioned like they have now. But if you really want to make this succeed to get that excitement that then generates funds, they do need a longer term lease. And uh, hence the reason for the five and five. Um, they will be paying, uh, the city does have an expense for the first three years of 25,000. It goes away after three years. Things like when the roof leaks, we're not worried about it. Things like when there's toilet paper not in the stalls, that's all their thing. Uh, we had, uh, about forty thousand dollars plus annually just before they came in to uh to just try to preserve the building a little bit and uh and frankly that was a i was running uphill um so it is a financially a good deal for the city and hopefully from a generational standpoint this could be an amazing future prospect and yet another reason to come to our great city thank you thank you president gisha further under further discussion alderman Bauk. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Yeah, I want to echo what uh, President Kisha said. Uh, I worked with this group for a couple of years when they were uh, in their early development, just doing some discovery work and uh, some marketing work uh, with fundraisers. And the reason that it's taken them so long and that funds have kind of slowed down is because of the, the macro economy. There were a lot of uh, companies willing to uh, contribute to this uh, until a couple of years ago when the economy tanked. So um, I can't tell you how much research, how much thorough uh, Mr. Testa we talked about who they have hired. They really have hired truly world-class talent, not just for what they would put inside the museum, but for the viability of the museum at all. Uh, and this is something that uh, uh, when it works, it will inspire kids to study 
Uh, I think, uh, Mr. Testa, we'd undersold one of the reasons a place like this is so important. Uh, China and India uh, put together about 360,000 new engineers last year. Uh, 360,000 new engineers graduating. America graduated about 54. Uh, and what this place is designed to do is to get kids thinking about space and inspired by uh, the magnificence that is space. And as our speaker said this evening about how they have some ungodly, the odds are against them at becoming astronauts, that's not what this place is about. This place, those astronauts need people, need engineers. They need people who put their safety gear together. They need people designing the space age polymers of the future that are going to get us to Mars and back. Um, and the astronauts are the rock stars. They're the Brett Favre. They're the quarterback of the whole enterprise. But the purpose of this museum is to inspire children to get to something higher than what they might feel they are capable of without inspiration like this. Uh, and, and so again, my vote will be yes tonight because I think it is uh, a glimmer of hope for the future of Sheboygan, something else that can attract families uh, to our uh, South Pier and Sheboygan River kind of area, reason to bring families, bring schools. The numbers for the past three years, they brought, uh, I, th I think, a thousand kids last year. Uh, 1,500 in May alone. 1,500 in the month of May, kids from all over, kids from disadvantaged backgrounds, kids from downtown Milwaukee coming up here being told, wow, science is fun, I can make things go boom, I can make things fly across the room. Nobody's ever expressed that kind of confidence in me before, but here they told me I could be a scientist someday. So again, uh, it's a very low risk <coughs> bet for the city, uh, and, and that's why I'm supporting it. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bauk. Next we have Alderman Hanna. Unfortunately, I can't vote on the issue because I serve on the Glassic board, but I wanted to really reiterate what Alderman Bauk was stating, that the purpose of the program is to engage young people in science and mathematics. And that's where we are woefully below, behind our international competition. And this is just one tool to do it. And it's a success in that we've brought so many children here for rockets for kids. This complements that. It complements our lakefront. Uh, it's going to be an attraction as we grow of, as a tourist attraction. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Uh, yes, this is just another piece of the puzzle to uh, add Sheboygan as a destination place. Uh, we have the Blue Harbor, we have the Wild Center, we have the Kohler Arts Center, we have the golf courses. We're probably the leading center for golfing. And we have uh, uh, the harbor, and, and this is just be another thing where people will come and want to come to Sheboygan. So I urge a vote for it. Very well said, Alderman Bowers. Any further discussion? <clears throat> uh, just going back to what Alderman Bauk said about the uh, astronauts being the rock stars of the, uh, of the space program, I had the opportunity in Rockets for Schools this year to, to have lunch uh, with Mr. Testweed and a, an astronaut who had been uh, in space travel on five different occasions. And, and truthfully, they are rock stars. Rock stars. I was in, in awe of this man and, and his wealth of knowledge. So. I just wanted to throw that in there. Any further discussion? President Kisha? Mayor Ryan, would it be appropriate to take both uh, items 819 and 820 together? As the, they seem to be a duplicate. So. Well, they are duplicate. I would just file the second one because you're passing one. The other one is just a copy. Can I add that to my motion and then sure. to file sure. item 820? Sure. Um, report of committee from Public Works. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Do we have a second on Second. That second. Okay, so we have a, a motion to pass 819 and file 820, correct? Yes. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Abstain. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren. Aye. And Bulk. Aye. 12 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. Communications and petitions, 825 and 826 to be referred. Reports of officers, 827 through 829 to be referred. Resolutions introduced 3, 8-30 by Alderman Gisha approving the terms and conditions of a business development loan agreement between the Redevelopment Authority of the City of Sheboygan and Magnatech Wisconsin Incorporated. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. 
Uh, do we Gisha, can we have a suspension? We need a suspension. I apologize, uh, and I'd be happy to explain. I'm uh, calling on a suspension of the, for a suspension of the rules, please. Second. 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 Motion to second on suspending the rules under discussion. Uh, just as an explanation for need of suspension, uh, this particular business is current location is moving them out because, good reason, they're expanding and they don't have the space for this secondary operation any longer. So the need for suspension is so they can move into a new facility. Thank you, President Gisha. Is there anybody opposed to suspending the rules? If there is nobody, the rules are suspended. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I now move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to pass the resolution under discussion. Under discussion. Which one Vice President Kittleson. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I just want to wonder, do we need to have a, um, any type yeah. of fight form along with this, or is that? No. You don't need that with this? This is uh, RDA. Explain? President Kish. Thank you. This is uh, money from our revolving loan fund, which is uh, monies that our community development block grant are basically federal funds. Okay. They're not general funds. Thank you. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Cuff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Falk? Aye. And Bowers? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 8-31 by Alderperson Montemayor accepting a grant of $70,075 and entering into agreement with the State of Wisconsin Department of Administration Comprehensive Planning Grant Program for the development of an update to the City of Sheboygan's Comprehensive Plan. Alderperson Montemayor. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to ask for a suspension first, and I will explain second. why. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules, please. Thank you. This is a grant um, that... Uh, Chad Palachek filed an application for in November of 2009. Um, he received the okay, yes, you can have the grant. He received that letter back the first week of this July, and it has to be back to Madison August 1st. So we need the suspension. And I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Okay, we have a, a motion and a second to suspend the rules. Is anybody opposed to suspending the rules? There is nobody. The rules are suspended. We have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion. If there is none, roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Cuth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. And Gisha? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 8-32 lies over. 8-33 through 8-37 to be referred. Report of Committee 6, 8-38 by the Special Committee on Risk Management. President Kisha. Thank you. I'd like to ask that 837 uh, also be referred to Public Protection and Safety and Committee of the Whole. Okay, we have 8-37 will be referred to Finance, PPNS, and Committee of the Whole. Correct. Okay, thank you, President Gisha. 8-38, Report of Committee 6 by Special Committee on Risk Management recommending filing two documents regarding Blue Harbor Resort Sheboygan LLC for excessive assessment that case number 09-CV-800 be settled on the basis that the assessments for tax years 2008, 2009, and 2010 be established at the fair market values determined by the review appraisals of Mr. Andy Busson on behalf of the city. Special Committee on Risk Management. Alder Person Koth. Um, I believe we're going to. Um, oh boy. Accept and adopt. We need to okay, accept and adopt. Accept and adopt, not bring it to the next council. Okay. Accept, accept and adopt the report of committee. Do we have a second? Second. Under discussion. Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, after this, after this uh, appraisal by Mr. Busson, and then the amounts for the different years here. Uh, is this going to is this going to require any refunds on the part of the city with these new reassessments? What what's going to happen, Steve? Uh, yes, it will. 
Alderman Warren, and I've with this high tech style. <laughs> this uh, proposed settlement addresses three years worth of uh, property tax assessments for the Blue Harbor Resort, 08, 09, and 2010. Um, Blue Harbor did file or went to the Board of Review each of those years uh, contesting their assessments. What I have in the columns there, the first column is the City Assessor's Valuation. You see for 2008, the city's valuation on the Blue Harbor Resort was $36,105,200. Blue Harbor, in their objection at the Board of Review, uh, was arguing <coughs> that the property had a fair market value of $19,500,000. And uh, <clears throat> then I'll, I'll talk about the 2009-2010 before I talk about the abuse and uh, review appraisals. 2009, the assessor had reduced the assessment to 30 million 400,000 plus. Blue Harbor uh, claimed or objected at the board review saying that the, in their opinion, the value was $15 million. So roughly half of what the city had it assessed at. And for 2010, the assessor uh, also had reduced the assessment to $25,430,000. Uh, the Blue Harbor Resort was arguing at the Board of Review that the uh, assessed value was roughly 6 to $9 million. Uh, this, <coughs> uh, they, each year the Board of Review sustained the assessor's assessment and uh, then the process is that the property owner pays their taxes when the payments are due and then has the right to file a lawsuit challenging the assessments as being excessive under the statutes. And that's what they did for 2008 and 2009 uh, and they will be, uh, they're arguing also for 2010 the same value as 2000 uh, or a lesser value for 2010. Um, we hired outside counsel, uh, Stafford Rosenbaum out of uh, Madison, um, and they, uh, as part of their process, recommended to the city that we hire this Andy Buson uh, as a review appraiser uh, on behalf of the city. Mr. Buson did not do a, a, a uh, an appraisal of the property itself. What he did was reviewed the city's assessment and reviewed uh, the taxpayers' written appraisal that uh, they had. And based on the review appraisal values, you can see the numbers there for 2008. Mr. Buson's review appraisal was uh, $25,930,000. For 2009, it was $22,270. $70,000. And uh, the, uh, the case was proceeding on. I think it was scheduled for trial in August. Um, there was discussions of settlement. And uh, the proposal from uh, our outside counsel that was agreed to by uh, Blue Harbor's uh, team and their counsel was to accept the Buson review appraisal values, not fight it any further. It's basically a compromise between what the city's assessment was and what the uh, uh, Blue Harbor's appraisal was. Uh, in the far right-hand corner, I don't have the specific dollar amounts that, that uh, will be affected, but you note that the, I had roughed out that approximately $210,276 would be refunded. Mm -hmm to uh, the Great Wolf Company uh, as a result of the proposed <coughs> settlement for 2008. 
Uh, in 2009, that refund would be approximately $52,660. And at least the way I roughed it out, there would be no refund in 2010. And uh, the rationale for that is that uh, as the assessment goes down, it gets uh, <coughs> agreed upon amount is below what Great Wolf guaranteed in their contract with the city and the redevelopment authority back a number of years ago at, that to pay $1,230,000 in total property tax on the hotel and condominiums. What complicates things a little bit for 2009 is that the Blue Harbor condominium people have, uh, they filed a claim on the values of the condominiums and uh, that went to the Board of Review. The Board of Review sustained the assessor. They filed a claim and uh, they've got, they're still, uh, they paid their taxes first of the year and they've got some time yet before they can still file suit on the valuations on the Blue Harbor condominium valuations. Uh, why that throws a wrinkle in is because Great Wolf's guarantee is not just of their resort value, but also the condominium value. So it's a little unclear at this point what the impact that might have, if any, uh, uh, with respect to uh, any changes to the Blue Harbor condominium uh, property valuations. Um, risk management uh, committee met and uh, recommended approving the settlement and uh, I guess either I or anybody uh, from the risk management committee would be happy to address any questions you might have. Thank you, Steve. Uh, under discussion, Alderman Bowers. Thank you. First of all, I don't want to offer any criticism of risk management, city attorney, or anybody, but I, there are some questions which when I was on risk management and uh, I, I saw this came before us where uh, they were uh, trying to violate their agreement. If I remember correctly, uh, Blue Harbor agreed on a $36 million uh, assessment for a certain number of years. Is that correct? No. No? No, what they agreed to do was on the, the tax end, they guaranteed to make a payment of $1,230,000 per year uh, in tax payment. Currently, uh, if the property was assessed at the $36 million, uh, they paid tax in excess of $1,230,000 for 2008. All right, so they were paying excess all these years that they've been there. Well, they're paying excess above their guarantee. Above their guarantee. Guarantee is a floor, but they're paying what the property's been valued at. Okay, so now the lawsuit has been dropped. No, it hasn't been finalized yet. The uh, proposal was to settle it at these amounts, and uh, it takes counsel to agree to a settlement. You're a party to the lawsuit. So we don't know if the other uh, will, will accept this amount or not. Uh, th they don't have to go through the same process that we do, <laughs> but they've indicated that those numbers, the abuse and review value numbers, are acceptable to them. Yes. All right, so now we still have outstanding, are the condominiums, which, how many condominiums are there? 64. And all 64 are uh, in lawsuit? Uh, I think 59 of the 64. 59 of the 64. They haven't filed a lawsuit yet. They filed a claim, and uh, that was denied. They paid their taxes, and they have, I think, until uh, around the end of July, early August, in which to <clears> file <throat> suit. Okay, so... In years down the road, we might be faced with the same situation. Uh, Not really. Well, uh, you got to look at it from what's the property worth, and uh, the uh, you got different opinions of value. Right. And the one uh, concern you have here is the city paid for and hired Mr. Busen to do the review <coughs> appraisal. Right. So he's saying the property. Our, our guy, our expert, is saying the property's worth those numbers in the middle column <clears> there. <throat> uh, we could say, no, we're not going to settle for those numbers and go to court and argue that those uh, 
numbers aren't good, but you know, he's our expert. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mayor Alderman Bowers. Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. Uh, a couple of questions, Steve. Uh, where does uh, the Blue Harbor come up with their, with their value? What do they base that on, that their business isn't doing well or just realist commercial, that type of commercial real estate is not doing well? That's my first question. I'll let you, I'll let you answer that one, then I have a follow-up. Primarily the income <laughs> approach. The, uh, the city's assessments were based on the cost approach, meaning what uh, there's three methods of valuation. There's, there's an arm's length sale, which is the best indicator of value, what the willing buyer will pay a willing seller uh, to buy the property. Uh, there's a cost approach, which is how much does it cost, how much did it cost to build the facility, and uh, at least the first year or two, that's a pretty good indicator of value as to what they've got into it. But the cost approach, as you go farther out, uh, becomes less and less viable because you're looking at costs from a number of years ago. Uh, the third approach is the income approach, and that's what the uh, Blue Harbor appraisal used, and that's uh, Mr. Boosen reviewed those income numbers and compared them to sort of national type trends and so forth and uh, came up with what he felt was reasonable. So I think it, uh, you know, not, I don't fault the assessor at all. The assessor really didn't have income numbers uh, from Blue Harbor because they don't break out their properties, their corporate properties by individual property uh, publicly. Alderman Bourne. Thank you again, Mayor. And then my two follow-up questions is, uh, are, uh, if we approve this tonight, it looks like that's $263,000. Uh, when is this due if we approve this tonight? And then my second part of that question would be, what effect is that going to have on the 2010 budget? Is that general fund money? What's that going to do to our budget? Uh, if you could. This uh, property is in TIF 6. Okay. These are uh, TIF dollars. Okay. Um, the TIF, TIF 6 is, uh, at least up to this point, doing pretty well. Okay. Uh, so there would be funds available to refund prior years. Um, as far as timing of that, the, uh, our outside council would, uh, with the, the Blue Har uh, Great Wolf attorney, be drafting some documents calculating more specifically what the potential refunds would be and, and the matter would be uh, disposed of on that basis. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Steve. Uh, next, we have uh, Alderman Bout. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <coughs> I, uh, I've heard from a couple of constituents on this, and I don't know if it's a perfect analogy. I don't know if it's a great analogy, but it's an interesting thinking point. Um, the assessment on the Blue Harbor went down 38% over those couple of years. If you take the 22-2 and 22-3 uh, and subtract from 36-1, um, so their value has gone down 38%, and they are getting tax relief on that because they've petitioned a court and they've taken us and we're going to settle. Um, what the constituents both called about was. Um, we have, in the, in the personal real estate market, we have the best of all possible worlds. We have what will a willing buyer give to a willing seller for personal property. There are lots of people that bought houses five years ago and six years ago in Sheboygan that are now trying to sell them at rates that are far, far, far below what they paid, and yet we are not offering those taxpayers any tax relief. And so it is an interesting point that our taxpayers are, uh, are being overtaxed, not only because they're overtaxed in general, I think, but their properties aren't worth nearly uh, what the assessment value is anymore. And so I just thought it was an interesting point that this business has been able to lobby and, and, and get us into a settlement situation. But there are, what, 15, 16,000 families out in Sheboygan whose properties aren't worth nearly what they were five or six years ago. And they're getting no tax relief. So as we go into budget season, again, we just need to have even more zeal for finding ways to cut our budgets and give taxpayers tax relief because they're coughing up money. They can't afford the lawyers like Blue Harbor can. Mr. Mayor. Th thank you, Alderman Bauck. And uh, it's, it's actually uh, kind of ironic that you brought up that 38% number because uh, overall the hospitality industry uh, last year was down about 38%.
um, over over prior years. So that's you know if you use the a combination of the income approach um, and the and the uh, cost approach, I think you're getting pretty close there, I believe. Steve, uh, yes, I just want to make two comments on your comments, Alderman Bob. Number one is that every taxpayer in the city has the same opportunity to go to the Board of Review, a Citizens Board of Review, to uh, object to your assessment on an annual basis and uh, abide by uh, the Board's determination or not. Uh, same process applies to every single property owner in the city. They, they don't like the assessment, they go to the Board of Review. If they don't like the Board of Review's determination, they file a claim, they pay their tax, and they go to court. We're not doing anything uh, out of the ordinary with Blue Harbor Resort. Uh, so they didn't lobby the city, if you will. They followed the statutory process. And I guess my second comment is uh, part of the problem with the hotel property is you don't have comparable sales. That's, that's a big part of the assessment problem is what is the Blue Harbor property worth? Uh, you can, you know, an assessor can tell a little easier if your neighbor's house sold last year for $100,000, you got similar Dutch colonial type of house, you have a goody, pretty good idea that, you know, there may be differences, but at least you've got a basis for comparison. Uh, with a property like Blue Harbor, it's really a very unique animal, and you're looking at uh, comparables nationwide. Uh, water park, indoor water park, uh, conference center properties, it's, uh, there's no exact science to it. It's really tough. So, uh, uh, you know, it, it's hard to come up with a value. Uh, the assessor uses the best information they've got. Uh, I think we hired a, a good review appraiser and he came up with the value that uh, he believes is reasonable. And, um, you know, if you don't want to accept that, that's fine. We can go to court, but uh, I don't know that that's in the long term best interests of the city taxpayer. Sure. No, and Mr. Mayor, just follow up. I wasn't intimating that anything untoward had happened. I just feel for our taxpayers who own houses, and uh, you've helped educate them that if they're listening, they can uh, make that appeal and uh, see how it goes against what's perceived as going against City Hall. So we'll see how it goes. Thank you. Thank you, Steve and Alderman Bauck. Alderman Bowers? Yes, just, just one uh, short question. You point out the deficiency in our, in our property tax system. But I would like to one, ask the question, wherever the, uh, on the income approach, wherever those figures presented to our assessor? When were they? Not, were they ever? Well, they were in the appraisal report. Uh, okay, they came from uh, the review value. No, from uh, Blue Harbor hired a nationally recognized uh, hotel appraisal okay. company, if you will. And the income approach was used in there? Yes. Okay. Does anyone know what that income approach came out to? Well, I've got that in the second column. They're uh, $19,500,000 for 2008, $15 million for 2009. Oh, I see. Okay, Blue Harbor, I see. It says Blue Harbor value. So that was the that's, one based on That's based on, based on their approach. appraisal. An income approach. Yes. Okay. All right. our, our city assessor did not have any of the individual incomes for Blue Harbor um, before this process. Yeah, and, and I will say that that does uh, disadvantage the assessor somewhat. Uh, the property owner can go to the board of review uh, based on uh, the information they've got. The assessor might not have all that same information uh, that can come out later on trial that may not have been available when he did his assessment, but that's the process. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. And Hannah? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Report of Committee 7, 8-39 by the Government Structure Committee submitting their recommendations to the Common Council as to the economic and administrative feasibility of having a city manager or city administ administrator versus a full-time mayor and a contracted outside legal counsel versus an elected city attorney. Alderman Rinfleisch. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. 
I ask that this uh, report be uh, referred to the Committee of the Whole. Second. Motion to second to refer to Committee of the Whole. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Referred to the Committee of the Whole. Reports of Committees 8. 8-40 by finance, recommending approval of the initial resolution regarding industrial development revenue bond financing to benefit Just Kids Dental SC. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the, the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second under discussion. Uh, Your Honor, if I may, this is, uh, this is a way for uh, government to be used at least the bonding authority, not necessarily of government, of the citizens of the city of Sheboygan to help create jobs in the city. Uh, if anybody wants to ask questions regarding about how an industrial revenue bond works, the bottom line is this is going to uh, create jobs of a new business in town, a fairly substantial facility, above average wages, and uh, that's a great thing, and we could use 30 more of these. Thank you, President Kisha. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Warren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Abstain. Hannah? <laughs> Aye. And Koth? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 abstention. Motion carries. 8-41 by finance, recommending authorizing the purchasing agent to enter into a contract for the provision of EMS billing and collection services for the fire department. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Uh, if this uh, resolution is passed, would there be anything in the resolution in case uh, the fire department no longer is... Uh, uh, doing the ambulance business, will there be an out in this contract or is it for a specific amount of time without any uh, uh, way out? President Gisha. Uh, the contract, like our previous contract, does have an out with given a uh, specified period of time. I believe it's 60 days, maybe 90. Uh, but uh, the answer to Alderperson Bauer's question is no. The answer is no. Yes. Yes. Oh, let me clarify, Alderman Bauer asked me if there was anything in this answers. contract that would preclude it from yeah. being canceled if in fact the city got out of the ambulance business. The answer is no. The answer is that there is an out. There is an out. Yes. All right. Under further discussion? Okay. Alderman Bourne, no. Okay. Alderman Bauer, is you good? No, he right. answered it. Great. Okay, if there is no further discussion, roll call please. Montemayor. Aye. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 8-42 by salaries and grievances recommending determining that all represented and non-represented employees hired and all elected officials elected after the effective date of this resolution shall be required to contribute the full amount of the employee required contributions under the Wisconsin retirement system, except where expressly provided otherwise under applicable law, collective bargaining agreement, or subsequent, subsequent council resolution or ordinance in passing the attached substitute resolution. Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, first, I move that the uh, report of committee uh, be accepted and adopted, and the substitute resolution uh, be accepted and placed on file. Is that correct? Yes. Passed. Yes. Passed. Yes. 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 Motion and a second to accept and adopt and pass the substitute resolution under discussion. Right? Vice President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess I just want to, two things I have to say. I, I, although I think this is a good thing to talk about and ultimately consider doing. However, this is something that should be put on the table at bargaining time, and I think all city employees need to be part of the solution, not just a few. And number two, I believe we are taking away incentives needed that to attract uh, and retain qualified professional people in the positions that the city needs these types of people the most. That being said, um, I will not be supporting this resolution. 
Thank you. Thank you, Vice President Kittleson. Next, we have Alderman Hanna. With all due respect to Vice President Kittleson, <laughs> um, in these economic times, I do not think the city is having difficulty attracting talented people. Um, and I think that we need to take a first step. This is uh, just one of many that we need uh, to solve our city and eventually the state and the federal government's all gonna get on board with solving these issues. Without addressing these issues, we're not gonna be able to address that elephant that's in the living room. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Alderman Buck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, also, I echo what uh, Alderman Hanna, Chairman Hanna has to say. Um, the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics 2009 Compensation Survey, again, not my numbers, they're Washington's numbers, they're smart folks in Washington, uh, wages only, <laughs> state and regional, uh, state and municipal employee wages, wages only are 34% above equivalent work in the private sector. And when you put benefits on top of that, uh, again, for same jobs, for similar jobs, uh, wages and benefits are 44% higher than similar work in the private sector. And again, um, this same bureau's figures have been used in negotiations in the 70s and 80s to drive up the wages. So I'm not interested in hearing from anybody who says the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics numbers cannot be used to have a frank, honest discussion about the directions the numbers need to go. It's just intellectually dishonest. Um, and we've talked about how it's hard to have a frank conversation about wages and benefits in this city because the city employees start to feel like we're dis being disrespectful of them and their work ethic, and that's not the case at all. Um, but, but taxpayers do have a level of resentment toward them now because of that disparity, and, and that's not fair. That's beneath the dignity of our, of our uh, employees. And by acting on this, and this taking time over years to do what it needs to do through the negotiation process, uh, we can restore some of that dignity uh, back to our employees. They contribute nothing to their retirement package, yet even someone who retires at about $60,000 a year, that's their compensation before they retire, what they earn in retirement, which is somewhere around the 20s, the, early, uh, the, young, the low 20s, you put that out, they retire at 52, 55, they live 25 years, that's $900,000, that's nine-tenths of a million dollars they will take and use and enjoy after having contributed nothing. And that isn't fair to taxpayers. Uh, if you make what, uh, for example, a fire chief makes in their top three earning years, what they will get in the retirement benefits is closer to one and a half or $1.6 million a year, again, after having contributed nothing. So there's no fairness in that, no dignity for the, for the uh, employees. And they're further insulated from the effects of what's going on in the real economy because it's a defined benefit program. It's not what almost everyone in the civilian sector or in the uh, commercial sector has now, which is um, you, know, you get what your 401k is worth at the time, not what we're gonna promise we're gonna give you, um, defined contribution. So um, I, I must respectfully disagree with, uh, with the vice president um, and, and saying that this is long overdue. I would have a, a question for Chairman Hanna. Um, given the language in there, uh, Ch Chairman Hanna, um, it, it basically says we're gonna do this unless other agreements or collective bargaining agreements prevent us from doing this. So where are the teeth? If you could explain the teeth in this. Yeah, thank sure. You. Alderman uh, Hanna. Thank you. Um, you're exactly right, Corey. Um, the collective bargaining agreements supersede this. So we still have to go to the bargaining table to negotiate this. Uh, but this just kind of sets the tone. Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Uh, next, we have Alderman Versi. They answered them both. Thanks. Alderperson Montemayor. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I do agree with our Vice President, um, Alderman Kittleson. Uh, our HR manager said to be most effective across the board for <clears throat> participation of everybody would be to address this strongly at the next contract negotiations. And I take, and I do understand, I don't, I believe our, our HR manager probably knows best about this rather than us. Thank you, Alderperson Montemayor. President Kisha. Thank you, Your Honor. As I generally agree with Alderperson Bauk, he set me back when he said, we have smart people in Washington. And I, <laughs> and I had to rise to that. Um, uh, I think that's more of a debatable point than an actual statement of fact. Uh, but uh, 
I, I would uh, also like to uh, thank Tom Rice for his advice. He is against this. And uh, Alderperson Kittleson eloquently at the committee level expressed uh, uh, her displeasure with this. We did add a couple of, uh, of uh, amendments on it just to clear up some, some misconceptions on it. Um, but mostly I'd like to add, note that, um, yeah, it's got to be taken up in the bargaining process. But just so everybody understands, it was taken up in the bargaining process. Uh, Alderperson Kittleson was there shoulder to shoulder with me for yep. 150 some odd hours. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, was, it was not, uh, sorry, that's the announcement hopefully of my new granddaughter. That's what's humming. <laughs> uh, the, um, it was summarily dismissed. It was not a topic of consideration during, on the other side of the table during bargaining. And I just don't want people to think that it was not aggressively pursued by Tom and by the bargaining team, in fact, mm -hmm. it certainly was. And uh, I, if I could have Alderman Bauck maybe just elaborate a bit more on the, and what you mean specifically by raise the dignity of the employee, I'm kind of curious about that. Alderman Bauck. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. What I mean by that, and I've gotten a, a lot of feedback from that, what I mean is our, our employees are good enough to contribute to their own retirement. They are capable enough, and, and again, I'll use the, uh, the story that I used uh, at the committee of the whole meeting, I think, with, uh, about Chase Longmiller, who happens to be the president of the firefighters union. What this, Chase would never do this, but what this system does is, in effect, uh, goes and bangs on the door of every kindergarten class in Sheboygan and says, hey, I hope you do really well in school. I need you to work twice as hard because right around the time that you're having babies and buying your first house, you're going to be paying for my retirement, and I'm not going to contribute to that retirement, so work hard, kiddo. That's what this system says. It says you will not contribute to your retirement, and which, by the way, isn't required by the statutes. We have over two decades negotiated away the employee's contribution, which is what President, and, uh, Han, uh, President Gish and Chairman Hanna's uh, resolution here uh, kind of undoes and says we're going to go back to what the state says we got to do, and that's pay half. And I think that by our employees paying half and us paying half, that's more similar to what you would see uh, in the outside in the outside world, and uh, I think it's fair, and it gives them their dignity, because what robs the dignity is when there's that disparity, and they get treated differently by taxpayers who look at them and say, frankly, you're not worth what I'm paying you, and they, and they get treated differently, and that's unfortunate. Thank you, Alderman Buck. Uh, President Kishi, you had a... Could I be, uh, be excused just for a moment to see the status of my new first grandchild? Uh, certainly, let's just <laughs> take a, uh, let's take a 30, uh, 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 a one-minute in-chair recess here. I apologize. And we will expect an announcement. Yes. Okay, moving on. Uh, we have uh, under the same subject, which was 8-42, uh, rather lengthy discussion, we have Alderman Bowers. Thank you. Uh, this resolution has been long overdue, but if I understand this correctly, the employee has three choices. He can pay the full amount, he can elect out of it, or he can pay any amount he wants into it? Uh, no. Uh, President Kishin, would you like to explain that? Thank you. By statute, uh, the city has a city portion by state statute. He can't pay both the city and the personal the, portion. The employee cannot. The employee cannot by state statute. So what this is saying is new employees will pay the, the employee part that the city is now picking up. And they will have no choice but to play, pay 100% of the employee portion of the contribution. It's strictly the employee portion. Uh, any further discussion? Vice President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. And again, um, I, go ahead. You. I, I, I want to reiterate that I think <coughs> this is a good thing to talk about and, and, and consider doing. However, I still say it needs to be brought out at the bargaining table and it needs to be, all city employees need to be part of the solution, not just a few. Right. And I'd like that plan put into place and that dis further discussion on that. Thank, Thank you. you, Vice President Kittleson. If I, if I may uh, have a small amount of input, the only danger I see of this is that non-represented employees, new non-represented employees will automatically be paying this. Okay. Uh, whereas represented employees will be, um, basically it will be a bargaining issue. So all hired non-rep employees um, will automatically, if this is passed this evening, be paying their portion, uh, whereas it'll be a bargaining issue for, for represented employees. That's the, that's the only danger I see here. Keep taking my thunder. 
Sorry about that, Alderman Versi. Would you like to say anything else? No, you're good. Okay. <laughs> uh, Alderman Bob. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Uh, what it does, and this will happen at the bargaining table. Absolutely, that's the only place it's going to happen. What this document does is expresses the will of the council and the will of the people. And it gives the bargainers, when they walk in that door, the, on, <coughs> on behalf of the city, it gives the city's team the strength of a piece of, uh, a piece of paper, a document that says, this city believes this is the right way and this is the intent with which we will enter into collective bargaining. So it, it sets the tone for that in the future. Uh, and, and just one last thing I'll share, Mr. Mayor. Mike Nichols wrote a column that was published in the press uh, oh, a couple of weeks ago. And it was basically a kind of a sarcastic column about the best retirement plan is to work for the government because it's got all these great benefits we've already <coughs> talked about. And so this blogger named Dr. Yaz, and I don't know who Dr. Yaz is, but Dr. Yaz thinks he's a pretty shifty character. Character. He thinks he's pretty smart. He, uh, what he says is, Mike Nichols, quit whining. You weren't smart enough to realize that all the bennies were in public sector. I was. I went out. Uh, and I think that the quote is, um, he didn't want to be a taxpayer. Uh, where, where is it here? Um, he's sick of the whiners out there that didn't, uh, that didn't think ahead in their career choices. Um, and that, so Dr. Yaz was smart enough to get in after we'd elevated wages to where they made sense. And he'll probably get out before we're actually able to get wages back to where they, where they should be. So Dr. Yaz has played the timing game pretty well. But uh, um, he missed the point of Mike Nichols' column, which was, Mike Nichols isn't wistfully jealous. He said some pretty unflattering things about Mr. Nichols being an idiot because he missed the gravy train, and Dr. Yaz didn't. Um, it was that Mike Nichols is was writing with unsatisfied sarcasm. And what Dr. Yaz misses is, guess what? Mike Nichols here, he's the employer. He was saying, hey, Dr. Yaz and city employees, you ain't all that. We love you, but you're not worth what we're paying. And as the employers, we're about to change that. And that's what this document does. This document expresses the will of this body that it is, it is enough. We have overpaid wages and benefits for too long. Things change now. And we'll see you at the bargaining table and see where it goes. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Balk, and I respect those comments, but let's remember uh, Dr. Yaz is an anonymous blogger. An anonymous, potentially not a city employee, but I'm betting. <laughs> Thank you, Alderman Balk. <laughs> Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Radke. Aye. Rinfleisch. Versi. Aye. Wangman. Aye. Warren. Aye. Balk. Aye. Really? No, sorry. <laughs> Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? No. And Montemayor? No. Eleven eyes, two no's. Motion carries. Report of Committee 9, 8 43 by law and licensing recommending repealing and recreating Section <clears throat> 70 6 of the Municipal Code so as to adopt and clarify the statewide smoking ban and passing the attached substitute ordinance. Alderman Renflesh. Uh, thank you, uh, Your Honor. I move that the report of committee be accepted and adopted and the substitute resolution be put upon its passage, uh, substitute ordinance, excuse me, be put upon its passage. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Uh, thank you. Under discussion, uh, the, um, the general ordinance uh, as, um, Rewritten again, uh, came from the city attorney's office. Uh, Assistant city attorney Chuck Adams uh, was um, uh, took the lead on writing this ordinance. What it does is not make our uh, smoking ban um, any more stringent or less stringent than the state. It simply uh, applies uh, the state uh, law to the city as well, and any, anything that was out of whack will be unified. Uh, the second thing it does do is by passing this. Uh, then uh, any um, uh, complaints or any um, ordinance violations will go to the municipal courts, and hence any fines paid will go to the municipal court and to the general or general fund versus going through the circuit court system, uh, which would, I think, definitely cl clog up that system even more than it already is. Uh, so it, it's not making anything more stringent. It's just simply putting our city ordinances in line with the state. Thank you, Alderman Rindfleisch. Any further discussion, Alderman Hanna? Yes, I, um, I just want to make sure that our new ordinance defines the enclosed space consistent with how this state defines it. So yes. there's no difference. Excellent. Correct. 
Thank you, Alderman Hanna. Any further discussion? Your Honor. Uh, Attorney McLean. For the sake of full disclosure, I think you'll find that the, in 70-6-A2 that there is uh, additional language in there that is not in the state statute. That has to do with the definition of enclosed indoor area or enclosed place. Uh, so that uh, is more restrictive than the proposed state law or the existing state statute. Got it. Alderman Redflesh. Uh, thank you. Um, a little confusion on, the, on that one at subsection two. Uh, the, that language is actually not from the state ordinance, uh, if I'm correct. That actually comes from the League of Wisconsin Municipalities. That's the language that uh, they recommended. Uh, it was in our municipality <coughs> magazine as well uh, to clarify uh, what is uh, that. So that's actually uh, not necessarily in uni unity with state statutes, but would be in unity with um, the vast majority of the municipalities that are passing this ordinance today. Uh, so subsection two is actually from uh, our, the group that we subscribe to, the League of Wisconsin Municipalities, as found in the Municipality Magazine. Uh, and, and may I ask, uh, with uh, being the chairman of law and licensing, the, um, uh, the, well, actually the deck permits were issued by city planning, um, but are, are our deck permits for smoking locations uh, that have been authorized are they within that this? That's going to be my question. These guidelines, you know, or, or have people spent twenty, thirty thousand dollars putting up smoking decks that are now going to be? No, the the biggest thing with the enclosed indoor area, um, if you re read uh, the subsection two, uh, the decks, in my opinion, will be um, certainly allowed um, because it is to define what is an enclosed area um, with number of walls, for example, uh, in there. Um, so, uh, for public benefit, I'll read this. Uh, in addition to the definition of enclosed indoor area set forth in section 101-123 Wisconsin statutes, an enclosed indoor area for the purposes of this ordinance shall include all space between a floor and a ceiling that is bounded by walls, doors, or windows, whether open or closed, covering more than 50% of the combined surface area of the vertical planes constituting the perimeter of the area. In short, what that means is that if more than half of it is walled in, it's inside. If more than half of that is exposed, it's out. So it doesn't count the uh, floor space or ceiling space, it's basically 50% of the walls. Of the walls, that's my understanding of that from the assistant state attorney. The other follow up on that is, is that the law and licensing uh, committee is also prohibited from prosecuting uh, anything. We cannot actually take that into account as well. Um, the ordinance is um, enforced not through law and licensing, but rather through uh, law enforcement agencies um, who would be, um, my understanding uh, from the police department is that uh, on a case-by-case, call-by-call basis. They're not going inside and if they see a smoker writing up the, uh, the bar owner immediately. Okay. Uh, that's not the intent. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Renflesh. Any further discussion? Alderman Hanna? No? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Renflesh? Aye. Versi? Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Foran? Aye. Falk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hanna? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. And Radke? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law, 7-40, resolution number 47-10-11, by alderpersons Gisha, Balk, Boren, Radke, and Hammond, authorizing the finance department to return to the Environmental Park Trust of Sheboygan County Incorporated program fees for the purchase and installation of solar panels at Maywood. President Gisha. Thank you, Your Honor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Bowers. What kind of money are we talking about here? Uh, President Gisha. Turning the page over, Alderman Bowers, <coughs> you will see that the Common Council hereby authorizes the Finance Department to re return fees in the amount of $30,000. It also notes the account number in which the fees are to be returned from. Any further discussion? Alderman Rinflesh? Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Percy? Aye. Longerman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. 
Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 7 Dash 55, RC number 114-10-11 by salaries and grievances, recommending amending section 29-75 of the 1975 Municipal Code so as to delete, add various positions from the Human Resources Table of Organization and Finance Department Table of Organization. Alderman Hanna. Thank you. I would move that the Reporter Committee um, be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and Sorry, a second. The ordinance be accepted and adopted. <clears throat> no, I'm passed. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt and pass the ordinance. Second. Under, under discussion. Motion and a second. Under discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. <clears throat> Versi. Aye. Wangaman? Aye. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. I'm sorry? Aye. Thank you. Cuff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. And Rinfleisch? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 7 54, RC number 113 10 11 by salaries and grievances, recommending lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire an employee benefits administrator in the Human Resources Department. <coughs> Alderman Hanna. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would move that the RC be accepted and adopted and that the <coughs> resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Alderman Bob. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd just like to know what the, uh, where, where we shook out with hourly rate or annual comp and benefits, whatever that was. I would, I would defer to the Human Resources Director. We have a uh, motion to open the floor to Tom Rice. Second. So moved. Second. <coughs> right. We have to be. Right. You did it right. We have a motion to second open the floor. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Ladies and gentlemen, if you would uh, go to your packet of information, there are two pieces of information. One is the current, uh, I shouldn't say current, is the past. Uh, salary grades that were in the old non-rep pay plan uh, and I would specifically cite uh, grade five which these two positions are graded at $18.48 an hour is the minimum $21.74 the midpoint and $24.95 the maximum so the the salary uh, alderman bulk would be targeted in that range uh, on the back of that page there are comparables for a similar position within the cities that we typically compare ourselves to. You'll notice that that range is uh, $23.08 minimum, $27.64 midpoint or market value, and $31.13 uh, is the maximum. So we're well below what the comparables show. If I may, Mr. Mayor, thank you. I have no interest in comparing us to local cities, comparable cities, because this is work that is absolutely comparable to the private sector. <laughs> and having done analysis myself on this and shared it with the, uh, the chairman, um, I'm more interested in what you could earn in Sheboygan as a comparable benefits administrator. So um, that 18 to 21 dollars an hour is comparable. And this person, you netted out with the college degree, though, right? So that you did ratchet that up. If you look at the job description, okay, yep. so that's, I just want to confirm because there's a lot of paper here. So I just want to confirm before I vote. So Clear. I thought you got that in there. So congratulations to the committee for getting the college degree in there. Uh, and now we're going to have to pay for that. So I think this pay range probably is in the ballpark. And this person would be hired in after. Uh, the resolution we just passed, so this person would be contributing to their, w would this be a representative position? No. Okay, so this person would be contributing half of their retirement. Mm -hmm. I'm in. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Bob. And kudos on the structure, too. The structure is, I think, good, so Thank congratulations. You. And Thank you again, Alderman Bob. <laughs> Alderman Bowers. So if I understand this correctly, the minimum is 18.45 and up, and so uh, this is what other cities, which I like Alderman Balk, could care less what other cities pay. We should be paying what 
industry pays. <coughs> now, my next question is, uh, this position, is it an experienced position out of college, or how much uh, experience do they need for this? I'm looking for the, mo the person that has the most experience in benefits administration, design of benefit programs, specifically insurance programs, and has administered those programs. So you're looking for an experienced personnel? That's absolutely correct. You I'm not take looking anyone for on a couch. This is not an entry level position. All right. So we have a minimum of 1845. Uh, can we amend our resolution to put the maximum amount that you can pay, or do we, are we going to give you the leeway to go from 18 up to, uh, let's say, 24 or $25? Uh, Alderman Bowers, there is a high end in there also, I believe. I'm sorry? There is a high end also. And yes, that's the purpose of the range. It's the 20. So it's, it's your prerogative to say you're hired, but it has to come before the council. Is that correct? No. No? The council authorizes waiving of the hiring of the lifting freeze, which creates the position, then we're allowed to hire for the position. So you could hire someone at the $25 an hour? Yes, I can hire someone within no. the range of the position, the mid, midpoint, and maximum. So we could go from the minimum to the maximum. So we really don't have any say. We, we know the, the lease is going to be is 36 or $18 an hour, which is $36,000 a year, up to, say, 25, which is $50,000 a year. So we have no say only in that range. Well, the salary would be dependent upon someone's experience, educational background, and so forth. I understand that. I, I don't know how you dictate a salary to me if I get somebody with 20 years' experience. What's that worth? Well, you know... <laughs> I mean, it's up to the council, but Alderman Bowers, I would suggest to you that the whole strategy behind salary administration is you provide a range which you pay jobs for, and that's the purpose of a range. It allows for variables like education, like experience, and so on and so forth. You're using comparables from other cities, and I'm like uh, Alderman Bulk. I like to see it in uh, the real life situation. Define that for me. What do you mean by real life? Real. It certainly isn't at $25 an hour. It certainly isn't at $24 an hour. I think that position is well within the $18 to $19 an hour. Uh, Alderman uh, Bowers, if, if I may, um, every, every time a person has been hired uh, in the city in a, a non-represented position, there's a pay range. There's a, there's a low and a high uh, that is authorized by I the council. I understand that. We um, almost had a problem with the uh, police chief and fire chief, as I recall because you give such a wide range and it comes before the council, and then all of a sudden, maybe that person isn't hired. Oh. Attorney McLean. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, this is part of the problem of uh, doing away with the non-rep pay plan a number of years ago. The non-rep pay plan had provisions in there for uh, starting somebody out within uh, X percentage of the midpoint was uh, authorized by so-and-so. If it was gonna be higher, it had to go to salary and grievance. If it was higher still, it went to council. Right now, you know, you don't have any, the HR director has no guidance. Uh, and so I would strongly urge the council uh, at, at some point to uh, come up with a new pay plan for non-represented employees. That's not just setting salaries, but establishing a process for coming up with how, what you're gonna pay different employees. That's been a big problem in the city for the last several years, and uh, it's not getting any better. Thank you, Attorney McLean. President Kisha. Thank you. Uh, I'll disagree with Attorney McLean. I don't think the problem was doing away with the non-ref pay plan. The problem was not coming up with a new one by now. <laughs> I think doing away with it because I wrote the resolution maybe, so I'm a little biased. <laughs> okay. was the right thing to do, because I think it was, it was too willy-nilly. And I think there was some stuff in there that gave way too much latitude. And I think um, we, and I know Tom is new, and I know he's working on such a plan. But to answer Alderperson Bowers, perhaps I could uh, ask Alderperson Bauk again, who did have a, you said, hey, I'm in, you like it. Uh, but who did have some information on the private sector and how this relates to that. Thank you, President Gisha. Um, if I may uh, add one thing. Um, presently, uh, we do have uh, Tom Rice working on a new non rep pay plan. By hiring an employee benefits administrator, it will free up more of his time to get that non rep pay plan to the council. May I make a comment, Alderman please? Alderman Bob? Just a second. I'd like to remind you that I come from the business sector. 
that municipal government is brand new to me. And the reason I set the salary range at a five was specifically because I understand the mood of the council. Uh, had I taken the comparables, I would have set it at a seven or an eight. It's not my intention to overpay for the job, but it is my intention to pay for the experience and the background to bring someone who's qualified into the job. And I would ask that the council not tie my hands and, and micromanage what the pay would be. Uh, I, I think the proposal is extremely reasonable. The position is necessary. Um, that's all I have to say. Thank you, Tom. Thank Alderman Bauer. Uh, President Gisha, yes, I, I had uh, rung in to share with that. Uh, uh, Alderperson Bowers, if it makes you feel any better, I did an analysis through an organization called uh, MRA, and that's who actually the city does its uh, salary and pay comparables with the uh, public sector, uh, private sector on. And through my research, the low end of that scale would have been appropriate without the college degree. But now that they've written in the college degree, it could, and with years of experience, it could creep up. So this, in my opinion, if that's worth anything to you, um, this is the right range for the description as, as described uh, now. And, and uh, so. Thank you, Alderman Bauck. Alderman Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, I think the range does something um, that is unique to our country and pay for performance. Um, you know, we do live in a democracy, we do live in capitalism, uh, where you make the most uh, of what you can. And if you're taking the opportunity to educate yourself, uh, to get the work experience, to be an ace, to be a number, you know, the, the, the starter on the team versus the follower <coughs> or the bench player, um, you know, and if we want the quality person that is going to, to, to take charge and, and be that, uh, then you gotta pay for it. Um, and likewise, if we don't get someone with the, those qualifications, we're not gonna pay for that. Then we're gonna pay for the qualification that they are. Maybe they're starting that process Well, they're not gonna get that pay at that point in time. That is in the private sector. The private sector is very much so you compete for the best. Uh, for us to get the best, we have to compete as well and provide that range. And if we're not the best yet, pay them accordingly as well. Uh, so that is something I do see in the private sector. That is something I, I know Tom has experience in doing. Uh, and I think that's just pure capitalism in its finest form is, uh, you want the best, you have to have a range that you're willing to, to look at. We know what the cap is. We know that we get the absolute best county out there. We know what the cap is. We know how the maximum we're going to pay for. There's going to be no surprises. So I'm in favor of this. Thank you, Alderman Rinfleisch. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, I guess a couple quick comments based off of a little bit of past experience. I've worked with a lot of benefits type people in the 401k and, and HR type world. Um, and I don't see anything wrong with the range. I do appreciate everybody's willingness to look at the ranges, but I think you might be kind of crossing that line of micromanaging um, a director's position. We hired Tom um, to do this. Um, obviously, he has some business background. I think we owe him the latitude to be able to find the best person for that position. I would expect that if he's going to pay somebody twenty-four ninety-five an hour, that they've got the qualifications and probably can create the efficiencies and do the things necessary to be worth that. So. Um, you know, I, I think it's great that we're watching that. I think that's what we're, we're here to do. But once it's set, I think we should let the uh, directors do their jobs. Well said, Alderman Hammond. I agree, and that goes for, for more uh, managers of the city besides just Tom Rice. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Wangaman. Aye. Boren. Aye. Bauk. Aye. Bowers. No. Gisha. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hannah? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. And Versi? Aye. 12 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries 7-56, general ordinance number 11-10-11, by alderpersons Kittleson, Montemayor, and Decker relating to two-hour parking limits so as, so as to add the parking limits on the north side of Wilson Avenue between South 8th Street and South 7th Street. Vice President Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would ask that the ordinance be, uh, ask for a motion for the ordinance to be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second under discussion. Under discussion, I believe this is already, if it hasn't been taken care of, it's already in the process of being taken care of. Thank you, Vice President Kittleson. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Boren? Aye. Bauk? Aye. Bowers? Aye. Gisha? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hannah? Aye. Cott? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Montemayor? Aye. Radke? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Wangaman? Aye. 13 ayes. Motion carries. 
Other matters authorized by law, 8-44, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Adam Mendez submitting an application for a waiver of the sexual offender residency restrictions will be referred to public protection and safety. 8-45, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from the state of Wisconsin Department of Corrections filing an appeal to the sex offender residency restrictions for the for state inmate Michael Sullivan will be referred to public protection and safety. And 8-46, an ordinance by Alderperson Kittleson repealing and recreating section 122-14 of the municipal code entitled private well abandonment. So as to update the ordinance and bring it into compliance with the requirements of the Wisconsin Administrative Code, that will be referred to public protection and safety. Other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. 8, 847 is communication from Dimitri Gaines stating a support for the spaceport project. That will be referred to building use. And finance. 848 is. Oh, and finance, excuse me. 848, what communication. 847. Uh, 847. 847 will go to finance and building use. Thank you. 848 is communication from Colin Catchell stating that the Sheboygan Armory should be saved and used for multiple events. Will be referred to building use and finance. 849 is communication from Patricia. A home regarding the issue with the Sheboygan Fire Department ambulance and stating that the only proper way to resolve it is to have a public referendum on the November ballot. Will be referred to public protection and safety. 850 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a memorandum of understanding between the city and Sheboygan County to demonstrate shared ownership and maintenance responsibilities for the Edge 2 V5.0.24 have a tabulator with VPAT printer. Voting machine. To be referred to finance. 851 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Outboard Club asking for a variance from the peer agreement wording in the agreement between the city and the Sheboygan Outboard Club. Will be referred to city planning. 852 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various license applications for the period ending June 30, 2011 and June 30, 2012. Will be referred to law and licensing. Before we adjourn, I'd like to address an issue. I'd like to clear the air on a matter. This is uh, uh, addressing uh, some rumors, some issues that have been going around town. Uh, typically, I don't address rumors, uh, but I need to set the record straight and I need to be honest. Um, I admitted uh, to this council, to the public, uh, basically to the world, uh, some nine, ten months ago, uh, that I uh, uh, was experiencing drinking problems, uh, problems with, with alcohol problems with alcoholism, uh, and that I would enroll in a program um, <coughs> to uh, improve my life, improve my lifestyle, uh, improve my family, basically uh, take care of myself, my family, my city. Uh, and I've been working that program. I see a counselor on a regular basis. I see a medical doctor. I meet with small groups um, of people in a similar situation. Uh, and I have been trying vigorously to work that program. Um, but recently, um, I had a brother in town. My favorite brother, we're a year apart. And unfortunately, we're too much alike. Um, I had a setback in my program. I was out in the city of Sheboygan. I was at drinking establishments, and I was drinking. Um, I know that uh, the rumors were swirling as I was out there. And they are true. I admit it. I had a setback in my program. I'm going to continue in my program. And I'm going to do it more vigorously than I have in the past, uh, including attending local meetings. I have not been attending any. I've been attending some group meetings out of town. Um, and that kind of gave me some cover that I wasn't that well you know, known. Uh, truthfully, if I'm going to you know, keep continuing to do this thing, I'm just going to attend some local meetings. Uh, with a lot of people that are in the same boat as I am. There's a lot of, a lot of us out there. Um, I was amazed last year when I did uh, make, make, make my announcement uh, how many people came to me. People that I've known for years that have said, you know, I'm in the same boat and I have been for a long time. Um, I'm an alcoholic, let's face it. I know it. I've known it for many, many years. Uh, some people can have a drink or two. I'm not one of those people. I know that. I've known that for a long, long time. And I've been working to correct that. And I've been working on that for many years also. It's not that I just started this in the last year. 
Uh, however, uh, being in the public eye such as I am, um, I can't lie to myself the way I used to because it comes out. And it comes out like a glaring sore thumb. Um, so I'm here to admit it. Rather than letting the rumors take their course, um, you know, I didn't choose this disease. You know, it's nothing we, you know, you go, hey, I raise your hand one day and say, you know, hey, I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna do this. Uh, you know, I chose me. I come from a family with a history. Um, I work on this every day. I work on it every day. I will continue to work on it every day for as long as I live. This does not impede my ability to do my job. It does not impede my ability to do my job. Um, believe me, I make it to work every day. And I'm sober 99% of the time. It's just when I'm not that it's scary. So I just want everybody to know that I will work my program even more vigorously. Um, I thank God for, for my family. Uh, you know, they're, they're, the, they're the people that really matter. Um, no, I'm, I'm not going to apologize to them. I've made my peace with them. Many times, many times over many, many years. Um, what I want to say is uh, we need to keep moving forward in this city. Uh, we all have private lives. Uh, mine is more public than most. Um, I will do everything in my power uh, to not be out there in this city again. And uh, I look forward to attending some local meetings. And some of you that are out there that have come to me before, I look forward to seeing you at those. I look forward to uh, the support of some people that are important to me. Um, I will be at work every day. I will continue on. We have some big things about to happen in this city. Uh, we have some major developments that uh, are coming to fruition um, in the very near future. Um, now is not the time uh, for me to turn back. We have a lot of good stuff on our horizon. So I promise I will dedicate myself 100% to my family, to my city, and that we're going to move forward. Thank you. Second. All in favor of adjourning? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries.